Hello everyone and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about our DNA technology or what we called as recombinant DNA technology. Now as always first things first let's see the definition of recombinant DNA technology what exactly it is all about. Now recombinant DNA technology is a very uh, widely used technique in genetic engineering and what this technique does is uh, it takes the gene of interest say for example I have my gene of interest and this gene of interest will be inserted into a vector okay a vector is nothing but a vehicle that is going to carry your gene of interest so you are going to combine these two different uh, DNA right this is from some source say for example we are talking about production of human insulin for the treatment of diabetes I will take this uh, gene this is a human insulin gene and we need to insert this into a vector say for example this vector can be a plasmid what is a plasmid plasmid is an extra chromosomal DNA that has the ability to independently replicate itself so say for example from E. coli I am taking this uh, plasmid and I insert this gene of interest in this vector what we get is this a recombined DNA that contains see the gene of interest and the vector it's a recombined form of DNA this is called as our DNA so what we do in recombinant DNA technology we isolate the gene of interest then we insert it into the vector to get the recombinant DNA and now this recombinant DNA it has to be multiplied right so we are going to transform this recombinant DNA into some host cell a suitable organism where it is going to multiply and produce your product coded by your gene of interest say for example as I said insulin so that particular gene will produce insulin now this is just a definition or you know very briefly I'm telling what the uh, recombinant DNA technology is all about now let's see the overview or all the steps that are involved in recombinant technology so let's begin today's video now recombinant DNA technology starts with the identification and isolation of gene of interest say for example we just spoke about human insulin you know what you're looking for what product you're looking for so you need to first isolate that particular gene of interest now now from what all sources can we uh, you know have a gene of interest these includes genomic library which contains all different genes you can have cDNA library that is nothing but complementary DNA library or you can chemically synthesize whatever DNA you're looking for of course provided if we know the sequence of that particular gene it is possible to chemically synthesize so these are the sources that you can have your gene of interest now you have a gene of interest what are you going to do next as, uh, as we just saw in the uh, introduction you need to produce the RDNA and to produce RDNA you need a vector so that is what is the next step second step is going to be construction of RDNA now how you can construct the RDNA we have suppose this is my gene of interest we have isolated the gene of interest and we have a vector T. Now what we need to do is we need to insert this gene in this particular vector. So now in order to insert this piece of DNA into the vector what we need to do is we need to cut open the plasmid right where we can digest the plasmid and insert this piece of DNA and again we need to seal it back. So that cutting open a plasmid is taken care by our molecular scissors that is nothing but the restriction enzyme. We all know that restriction enzyme can cut in the DNA, right? It acts as a molecular scissor. So it is going to cut your plasmid. And there is a second set of enzyme that are involved here, which are called as ligase enzyme. What they do is they are going to ligate or seal the DNA in this. So at the end, after you treat it with your restriction enzyme and ligase enzyme, what you get is your recombinant DNA 
Now this is still, you know, you're working in lab, you have our DNA ready, but how are you going to multiply this particular gene of interest? How are you going to get the product out of it? In order to have your product, it has to be transformed in some host or in some living system. So that is what the next step is. You have to introduce your RDNA into a suitable organism where it can multiply and it can produce your product of interest. Now, in order to introduce RDNA into an organism, say for example, I have this RDNA which is ready and I want to insert it in a host. Say for example, that host is E. coli. Now this RDNA needs to be transformed in the host cell or in a suitable organism and that can be done by specific gene transfer methods such as physical gene transfer method where you have methods like electroporation, uh, liposome mediated gene transfer, microinjection etc. Or you can go for chemical gene transfer. We use method like PEG method, calcium chloride method or you can go for virus mediated gene transfer where you use virus to transfer your uh, RDNA. Now once we have done the gene transfer method, what would be the next step? We have you know done the gene transfer method and we have a culture now where we are assuming that the host is containing the RDNA. So now next step would be selection of transform cells with RDNA, right? Why we are uh, doing this step is there are three possibility after you have completed your step three. Let's see all three possibilities. The first possibility is you have got non-transformed cell. There is a high chance there is a possibility that uh, not all the cells are going to take up your RDNA right that you have prepared. So the first thing is you are non-transformed where your RDNA is not been taken up. The second possibility is where you have got transformed cells but the plasmid or the vector is non-recombinant. That means where you were uh, preparing the recombinant DNA in the second step, there is possibility that not all the vectors have got your gene of interest, right? It is not 100%. So the second possibility over here is I might have transformed cells, but they contain non-recombinant vector. That means it also doesn't have my gene of interest. And the third possibility is transformed cells with recombinant vector right the cell which has got the RDNA and this is what exactly we are looking for right transformed cell which contain the RDNA right so you can either have a non-transformed cell which has not got anything you can have transformed cell but which has got simple plasmid that is non-recombinant vector or you can have transformed cells which has your RDNA or your recombinant vector and this is what we are looking for and particularly when you're doing this in lab you know the ratio of getting this particular combination the colonies of your desired uh, combination is comparatively less than these two type of colonies now so here I know that I'm looking for this particular type of colony right but how am I going to select just by looking at the plate if I have a culture plate in my hand and E. coli is you know E. coli has formed different colonies how am I going to know that this particular colony in my plate you know this particular colony is what I'm looking for how, how am I going to screen what I'm looking for for that what we do is we use certain antibiotics in the media where the uh, RDNA would carry gene for that particular antibiotic resistant or we can also go for uh, some pigmentation or some visible characters say for example if you know blue white screening a selection of recombinant cell where uh, the cell which are non-transformed would be blue in color but the cells which are transformed with RDNA will produce white color colony right so when you look in the media you will have blue color colonies and you will have white color colonies and by looking at it you know that blue color is the non-transformed colony but the white one is the transformed colony with your RDNA okay that is an example so you go for selection of transformed cell which contain your recombinant vector by any of this method you can also go for blotting technique or uh, certain assay for biological activity and find out your uh, desired colony 
and once we have got our you know selected colonies once we have got what we are looking for it is going to be still in limited number yeah it is going to be less in number so the next step would be once we get what we are looking for we need to multiply them to get many many copies of that particular gene of interest and why are we doing this why are we multiplying it so that we get the desired product in larger quantity right so at the end we are looking for the protein production by that gene of interest so you multiply that in your host cell uh, now what happens is this plasmid has ability to you know replicate itself so it is going to multiply in the host cell and produce many copies of itself and once we find this transformed uh, cell with recombinant dna we are going to multiply it and at the end what we are looking for is this system is going to express your gene of interest so that you get your protein of interest that's what we are talking about uh, human insulin one example that is produced by the similar method called as rdna technology where you take the human uh, insulin gene put it in a vector transform the cell select the cell and go for a higher uh, scale production multiplication and expression of your gene of interest to get your final product so that's all about uh, recombinant dna technology that is the overview of how uh, you know recombinant technology is done in the field of genetic engineering one of the very useful technique and i hope this was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning